What's up everybody, my name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So Corsair have just launched their latest pro wireless gaming mouse and we're gonna check it out today. So we're looking at the brand new Qatar Pro Wireless mouse coming in at $44.99. This little guy is a mid-weight, mid-priced wireless mouse that seems incredibly familiar, so stick around to find out why. Before we crack on with this review, if you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru, please consider supporting us for free by smashing that subscribe button down below. So straight away, this is one of the most basic looking peripherals I've seen in quite some time, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The Qatar Pro is incredibly understated in design and aesthetics. So there's no aggressive angles, no crazy contours, and no RGB, it's just a simple mouse. Okay, I am dumbing it down a little bit. It's definitely a modern design. The left and right buttons are separate from the main shell with comfort grooves on them, making it just that little bit extra comfortable. The front edges of the buttons and the mouse are slightly angled, but not too aggressively, and the body tapers in towards the base of the mouse for a more natural grip support. We have what I would say is a medium hump towards the back of the mouse, which is also its widest point, and that also adds to the comfort level. One thing you may have noticed is that it's almost an ambidextrous design because it's completely symmetrical. The only thing that makes this a right-handed only mouse is the forward and back buttons that are left-hand side only rather than on both sides. Hang on a minute, what I've described here is pretty much a Logitech G203 mouse, and that's because this basically is a G203 in terms of design. The only difference really is that the G203 is slightly more pebble shape, whereas the Qatar Pro tapers into more of a point on the back end, and also the left and right buttons are more contoured with a slightly more aggressive front end. The sides of the Qatar Pro also have plastic grips with small triangles molded into the plastic, whereas the G203 has no grip at all. The Logitech G203 is an incredibly popular, affordable mouse, so I can definitely see why Corsair would want to take heavy inspiration from it. I actually reviewed the G203 LightSync earlier this year, so make sure you check that out too. Corsair's Qatar Pro Wireless is of course wireless low, which makes it even more similar to Logitech's G305 wireless mouse that has the same body as the G203. There are a couple of differences though. The Qatar Pro is even more understated since there is only a tiny RGB LED that indicates which DPI profile you have selected, which can be changed by the DPI button above the scroll wheel. The scroll wheel itself is completely rubber and it has the same textured triangle design found on the sides. And I really enjoy this as there's no way that your finger is going to slip off. It's not loose at all and it moves with tactile increments. On the bottom, it's as basic as it can be. Two large PTFE glide pads that are very smooth on my mouse mat and they feel great and offer a consistent glide. In the center, we have a small oval glide pad too around the sensor cutout. Underneath that, we have our switch for the wireless, off or Bluetooth modes, but more on connectivity later. The mouse is wireless, so it needs to be powered somehow, but it doesn't have an internal battery. Instead, it takes a single AA battery, just like the Logitech G305 that I mentioned earlier, and a battery does come included, which I'd expect at this price point. To insert the battery, you have to find the small bump on the top shell, pull this back and the palm rest slides off to reveal the battery bay. Inside to the right is also also the handy little pocket that the USB dongle comes stored in. We'll take a look at battery life later, but now let's take a look at build quality and comfort. As a whole, build quality is excellent. I expected the battery door cover to flex and not feel secure since it's a removable part, but on the contrary, it's incredibly solid. There's no flex or movement in it at all. The sides are absolutely solid too, and no matter how hard I squeeze, there's no give and I can't actuate the side buttons either. When shaken hard, there is a minor rattle from the primary buttons, but in general performance and heated gameplay, there's no noise coming from it at all. There are two things that annoy me a little bit about the Qatar Pro, however. The DPI button when flicked, imagine scrolling down fast and accidentally hitting the DPI button, it makes an awfully loud high-pitched noise, and the same can be said for the side buttons too. The other thing is the primary buttons. These are slightly mushy feeling with both pre and post travel on both the left and right buttons. Dominic had this exact issue when he reviewed the Corsair Harpoon RGB wireless mouse last year. As for the side buttons, they also have noticeable post travel. So here's a sound test of the buttons and the scroll wheel for you so you can see and hear some of the issues I've just addressed.
Comfort wise, I had a bit of a hit and miss experience with the Qatar Pro. Overall, it is comfortable for all grip styles, providing you let your pinky just wander off and do its own thing. The way the back of the mouse tapers into more of a point means there's no support for your pinky. With claw grip and even fingertip grip, trying to rest it on the mouse causes your hand to cramp a little as the shell is too far back. This didn't bother me too much, but I am used to larger mice with pinky support, so it's more of a personal preference thing. What did bother me though was weight distribution. The Qatar Pro Wireless weighs in at 96 grams, so a medium weight class. Of course, this could be made lighter by using a AAA battery with an adapter to drop the weight slightly, but the weight isn't an issue to me. It's more the fact that all the weight is in the very back of the mouse. So every time I lift the mouse off to move it, the back end instantly falls down and it hits my mouse pad. And this bugged me. I use quite a light grip and it was definitely noticeable enough to be a nuisance. So let's talk about connectivity. There's no wired option for the Qatar Pro. Instead, we have Bluetooth 4.2 and 2.4 gigahertz slipstream wireless via the included USB-A dongle. Gone are the days of shunning away wireless gaming peripherals. Instead, slipstream wireless offers sub one millisecond latency, a thousand hertz polling rate despite being wireless, and the ability to switch between the fastest channels available to ensure that you're on the most reliable connection at a range of up to 33 feet. Now this means even in areas that other wireless tech could possibly cause interference you're not going to notice any dips in performance. Of course Corsair is going to boast about this within their marketing material but how is it in actual use? Well I love it. I've never experienced an issue when using this wireless technology even when having other wireless devices around me on at the same time. There's no dropouts, no lag, just nothing. It's so good I can't tell the difference between wired and wireless anymore. I used to be a wired only kind of guy, but these days I absolutely prefer wireless when possible when it's good quality, especially when it comes to mice since the cables just get in the way for me now. This is absolutely the mode that you want to be using when gaming for best performance. If you're not gaming or you're doing light gaming that doesn't need the higher specs, then you'll want to move over to Bluetooth 4.2 if your device supports it, of course. This is great for mundane tasks, working, browsing, whatever you're doing like that, and it'll increase the battery life, but it's not for hardcore gaming. As the latency goes from sub one millisecond to 7.5 milliseconds or more, and your polling rate drops down too. So you can have the Qatar Pro connected to your gaming PC via Slipstream Wireless, and then at a flip of the switch, you could use it via Bluetooth on your laptop or another device. And that's another handy use for the dual connection. The Qatar Pro Wireless boasts up to 135 hours of continuous use via 2.4 GHz slipstream wireless from just one single AA battery. That lack of RGB definitely adds to the extended battery life here, and that's pretty impressive. One thing to note is the battery must be alkaline and not zinc chloride to achieve this. Moving over to Bluetooth mode may potentially increase the battery life by quite a substantial amount. The RGB LED also shows your battery status when powering on. So, you know, green is sort of fully charged, yellow halfway, red on the lower end. There are also two power modes for both Bluetooth and wireless modes as well. There's performance and power saving. You can enable these by turning the mouse off, press and hold the scroll wheel, turn on the mouse via wireless or Bluetooth modes, and then release the button. The RGB LED indicator light shows purple for performance mode and yellow for power saving mode. Performance mode is the highest polling rate available, two minute sleep timer, whilst power saving mode is a minimum polling rate and a 10 second sleep timer. Now this is a very handy feature to have if you're in a pinch and you need to squeeze every ounce of juice out of that battery. Sensor wise, the Qatar Pro is using a PixArt PMW33 so not the highest end sensor, but it's not to be sniffed at either. With a thousand hertz polling rate and DPI from 200 to 10,000, increasing in 100 DPI steps, there's more than enough for everybody's preference. The mouse comes with three onboard profiles, red being 800 DPI, white being 1500, and green being 3000. Of course, we can change these and set these via IQ, but we'll look at that later. So when testing the PMW3325 
whilst gaming, mainly via Call of Duty as that's my preferred game when testing mice since it's fast paced and you need accuracy so you'll notice any dips in performance if the mouse has any. Whilst testing it, it performed great. I didn't notice any noticeable jitter or acceleration in Call of Duty and it seemed as accurate to me as I'd like a mouse to be. Yes, there is pre and post travel on the primary buttons, but the switches inside are snappy and work well. It's just a shame that they're slightly spongy. Let's do a liftoff distance test since there is no adjustable liftoff distance options via the software. We'll find out what sort of liftoff distance the sensor has. So stacking discs to see when the mouse stops tracking is how we're gonna test it. So when I tested this, I used Corsair's new MM300 Pro oversized premium mouse mat, which is excellent by the way, and one disc height it tracked as normal. Two discs started to cause a slight delay in response and three discs stopped tracking entirely. So I'd say this is around a medium high liftoff distance and I did notice the cursor moving when moving the mouse during general use. When I was completely zoned into a game it didn't bother me that much but for those that are super sensitive to their liftoff distance requirements they'll definitely notice how high it keeps tracking here. Jumping over to IQ make sure you have the latest version installed and here we get a simple but welcome offering from Corsair. Via the actions tab you can reprogram and remap any of the five programmable buttons which excludes the left click. You can assign macros, launch applications, set keyboard functions and much more. Via the DPI tab you can adjust your three adjustable settings to your preferred setting and also change the color of the RGB indicator light per stage too. In the settings tab you can change polling rate, brightness, change sleep timer, enable battery gauge in system taskbar and enable or disable power modes as well. So overall I think the Qatar Pro does a good job of being a mid-range simple and straight to the point gaming mouse. For those that want the benefit of incredibly stable wireless with the ability to switch between devices via Bluetooth switch and wireless, then this may be the mouse for you. It's pretty much a Logitech G305 at heart, but this is a new release and it's actually slightly cheaper than the G305 because that currently retails for around the £50 mark, whereas the Qatar Pro is £44.99 at launch. The sensor was reliable and accurate, it's just a shame that that high liftoff distance was there. Pre and post travel on the primary buttons and the heavy back end were also some negatives for me. But overall, I quite liked testing this one out. What do you guys think of this mouse? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, smash subscribe, ring the bell, check out our merchandise, and remember to read our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.